Uh, We then are starting this new message series called More Than Meets the Eye. It is a spiritual warfare series. And where I want to start today is really answering the real question that we probably all have, which is which is why are we in this series now? And it's very simply this. And it's going to be this first point that's in your notes that spiritual warfare comes at times of spiritual advancement. And we know in our hearts that we know what God's doing here in this community of believers that he is causing an advancement in us. It's a work that he's doing. It's nothing that we are doing. He's actually, it's, it's the season that we're in where there is growth. And it's not just, it's not just numerical, it's in us. And so spiritual warfare comes at times of spiritual advancement. When you are pressing forward in God, when the Lord is at work, it, 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 it also sounds the siren for the enemy and he wants to come around and stir things up. And it's because, of, because listen, we know there's big demons guard big treasures. Wants to guard big treasures. And so some of you that are dealing with some things in your life, strongholds, things that have been there. Listen, big demons are, are after your family because they're guarding big treasures because there's some valuable things there. Our foundational scripture then is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, very familiar part of scripture, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. This foundational scripture as we start talking about spiritual warfare. I like the way that the living Bible says it, and I want to read that. It says this, for we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies, the evil rulers of the unseen world, those mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world and against huge numbers of wicked spirits in this world. Spiritual warfare. And so we're in the South. And so I want to start, like before we all start getting scared, rounding up the cabbage to make sure that we would make the right thing before we stop cutting our fingernails today when you know they need to be cut. Uh, what other, other traditions? Throwing grass over your shoulder, no salt, whatever, whatever we want to get into that's been culture. I want to make sure that's not where we're going today. We are not approaching this scared. We don't sit here like, oh, Lord, the devil come to get us. If that's where you're at, you came to the wrong place. If you're scared about it, I don't want to talk about it because it's going to stir something up. Take a look at your life. It's already stirred up. So you might as well start winning instead of sitting down, taking a spiritual butt kicking from the enemy because you refuse to believe. I don't believe in all that. You don't. It's funny because your wife does because she sees you getting your behind beat by the enemy and she got to pick you up every time instead of us being a man of God that stands up and says no to hell in my life and in my family. No, no, no. Sick of it. Tired of it being weak. We're not going to be weak. God does not have weak children. We go through difficult times, but you get up one more time, then you're knocked down. We're all knocked down. It's the day that you hear, get back up and fight again. No, we're not going to be scared. Oh, Lord, I'm going to put a, got to get my rabbit's foot. Got to stick my fish on my car. Got to have my fake scriptures because I, oh, and you're doing the cross. You don't even do it right because you're not Catholic. You're not even Episcopalian. Some of you, I, I, at least I like the honest ones, don't really know what to do, so they just go. <laughs> the round the world blessing. Just this. With the, you got to do your hands like that. Two fingers, one thumb, and you, I don't know why. Maybe this, you know, Picasso did Jesus that way, so we thought that's in the Bible. It's not. So our approach to spiritual warfare is found in 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one that's in this world. That's where we start. We're coming to spiritual warfare from that place. I'm from God. I'm an overcomer. And the one who's in me, the reason I'm an overcomer, not because of me and not because of my resume, 
because the one that's in me is greater than the one that's in the world. If you're going to be in spiritual warfare, you're going to win. You have to be this next one. You got to be fully convinced of your identity in Christ. Well, Pastor James, what is it? I'm glad you asked. Today, if you have a worship guide, you should look inside. There's a, a, a insert, which we normally don't have, but there's an insert. This is who I am in Christ. If you don't have a worship guide, you've got the app. If you look on our church app, there's a whole other set of notes today that says who I am in Christ. Over 50 I am statements of who you are in Christ that we put together for you so that even if you take five a day and start praying that over your life, putting that on your steering wheel, putting it on your mirror, wherever you need it, start and take five a day and just go over those and, 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 just, and, and just like pills, take it and repeat. Every morning, take a dose of, I am God's child, for I'm born of an incorruptible seed of the word of God, which lives and abides in me forever. And every one of them has a scripture to back it up, because I know all the theologians that's out there want to try and start some stuff with me. But I back my stuff up with the word. So you can do the research. And if I'm wrong, good. That means you, you searched it, you looked. But every one of these is backed up with the word, because the enemy respects and has to yield to the word, but he does not have to yield to your ignorance. So if you don't know, Satan doesn't go, well, that's, you know, they don't know, but it's there. He will take advantage of you and your lack of knowledge. And, there's, and this is why I want to make sure you have these true statements about your identity of who you are in Christ. I mean, Curdy, every person, if we run out today, I'll get it to you again. Let, just let us know you need it. I want to make sure every person has, I would encourage you, get more than one copy if you need to. Confess it over, stand on the word. You got to be fully convinced of who you are. No one's going to talk my daughter out of who, what her name is. Micah Hill. No, no, your name's Terry. No, I don't know who you're talking to. But she'll tell you, my name is Micah. No, no, no. Lisa. No, 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 no. Why? Because she's fully convinced. Because she's had 16, 17 years of her parents talking to her about her identity, calling her by her name. And we don't just call her by Micah. We call her by her name. Confident, strong, following the Lord, leader. I call her by her name. My children, we speak to all of them, and, and it's hard if you have sat there and you called them other names, and now you want them to believe the good names. The wounds that you inflicted are still open. You got to reverse the curse. You got to go back. I apologize for calling you. Here's your real identity, and you fix it. You got to be fully convinced of identity in Christ. Here's a second one. You got to make, you got to be knowledgeable about your God-given authority that every believer has according to the finished work of Jesus at the cross. You don't get authority because you have a good spiritual credit report. You have a good, you have given authority because of what Jesus did. You can't do nothing about it. It's already done. You walk in that authority that is by the finished work of Jesus. You have to be knowledgeable of that. And as we start talking about spiritual warfare, praying about it, like, Lord, like, what are we, like, what's, what's the issue? Why is there such a thing about it? The issue is because we have more confidence. You can't, go ahead, you're good, you're good. You cannot live a victorious, overcoming life in Jesus if you have more faith in the power of Satan than you do in the power of the Almighty God. We got all kinds of faith in Satan. Watch out, the devil gonna get you. It's, it's, it's New Year's Eve, you better, you better not eat no chicken because that's the door, the gateway to hell. It's through chicken. On New Year's Day, the devil's a lie. And, and the gate to prosperity is, I'm oh, not following God's plan. No, cabbage, <laughs> cornbread. Father, forgive us, for we know not what we put our faith in. Oh, we scared. I mean, we, I mean, we, we scared. Did you hear about what Satan doing? Uh. 
the devil around. You got to watch him. He loosed in our whole nation. And if it makes you run scared, I want to see one more sticker that says one nation under God if you don't believe it. Because if it's under God, then we are the custodians of that power. We are the custodians of that authority. And believers ought to stand up and say, no, 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 no. We are a nation under God. And no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. But you cannot have spiritual authority if you have more power, more faith in the power of Satan than you do in the power of God. And this is why we have to be very, very cautious, even with our young people, because they want to see real power. And the enemy perverts that very thing and shows them the demonstration of illusion and the demonstration of demonic powers as well. But we have to know God is not going to entertain us. And so it's fine. You stand and you don't get all scared and we can't like, keep kind of locking them down. Show them the power of God as well. Our students ought to be able to see that their God, while somebody else is disappearing, making smoke appear and, and making mirrors shake and, and show, they ought to see the power of God in their family knowing that when I lay my hands on you, that you're sick, you're healed in Jesus name. They ought to see us walking through the house. What are you doing? Why are you putting stuff on the, on, the, on the doorpost? Oh, that's anointing oil because I've got authority in this house and no weapon that's formed against us. No, no demons are going to live in my home. And that's how it goes. And that includes, that ain't just, and that's not just right to our children. You have to stop that stuff in your families as well. I don't care if she is your sister. She don't come in your house doing breaking the spiritual rules. This is how it goes. And when she comes in, it's going to be under the authority of this house. If not, there is the Jehovah Hampton you can go to. <laughs> and fellowship with your stuff there. But as long as you're going to be in this house, this is how it goes. Oh, we're going to say it for agape too as well. Because we know we have spiritual advancement here and we know that the enemy has sent assignments to try and come against our church as well. Oh, but let me tell you, no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And it's not because of Pastor James. It's not because of it. It's because of the finished work of Jesus. That in, 19, that in 2009, the Lord spoke a word. The Lord spoke a word to heart. You would go there and build a church that looks like heaven and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. He gave us a promise that I'm living my life on, that when I finish walking this earth, I will go down believing what he promised us back then. I didn't move my family to come here and say, thank you, Satan. May I have another? No, ma'am. No, sir. We came here to change a whole city. We came here to change a whole county that they would find a living Jesus that would love them like no other turn their lives around fix marriages, fix minds change hearts, overcome racism overcome the things that the enemy would try and keep us in religious spirits and bound, oh the devil's a lie and Jesus is alive because there's more than meets the eye it didn't change because we built a building. It didn't change because we started having services. It changed because we prayer walked. We prophesied. We believed and stood. And we're still believing, still standing, still trusting, still doing the same things. It may look different than it did 13 years ago, but the core of it is still the same. We stand on what God has told us. Because the only thing that really will unite us, they can't legislate love. They can't legislate unity. Only God can do that. That's where we stand. And we let him be God. We take our rightful position as well. You cannot keep more faith in what Satan can do. And you don't have faith in the power of V. Somebody say V. Not A the almighty God because there is only one and there is no other the almighty God and so today I know it's a little different sir Pastor, but he's a little upset angry angry black man no no I'm not angry mm -mm, mm -mm, no not angry at all no, black yeah not angry though and so some of, like, some of the bitches are like can we laugh at that yeah it's okay I've, I've been this for I've been black 51 years. It's okay, I'm good with it. 
It ain't the lighting. It's really me. <laughs> it's, I got some dark. No, no, no. It's me. It's me. It's me. And so here we go today. I just, we're going to start here. And this is the way I felt like we need to start. So right where you are, if you are able, I need you to stand up right where you are. Yeah, come on, stand. Here we go. Here we go. If you don't want, I know, I know some of you are like, it's a free country. I don't want to stand. Then don't stand. You're fine. You're just fine. You can sit right where you are. It's a, you're right. It is a free country. Uh, but, and so I want you free to do whatever you want to do. And these are where we're going to make some confessions. And you'll have this as well. Send your notes as well. But I want you to get, we're going to make some confessions about who we are. And it's going to be our daily confession. This actually is what I pray every day. The confession I have and that I've taught my children every day. This is how we start our day. And we do it because we got to be fully convinced of our identity in Christ. I don't want them proud or, or, or convinced first of their, their identity as, as a hill or Pastor James's as, uh, daughter or son. I want them convinced that they are a daughter or child of God first. Then from there, the rest of it comes on. So this is our confession. Are you ready? So you're going to just repeat after me. Father, I believe and declare. Okay, see, yeah, see, this is just really weak. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do it. We're going to do it with conviction because we're talking about spiritual warfare. And it doesn't matter. Well, does it mean that, the door, that it's not heard? Well, you're not trying to speak to God about it. God knows who he is. But you've got to start speaking back to some of them things that's been speaking to you. So I'm just trying to help you. But, you, but, but if you want to go ahead and mumble, go ahead and do that. But they don't mumble at you in the middle of the night, do they? They don't mumble at you when they come after your family. They don't mumble at you on your job. They don't mumble at you at school. They don't go, you know, I think you're not really all you are. I think you're terrible. I think you're ugly. I think you're this. You ought to take your own life. No, they say it bold and they say it loud. But, but us, no, we're going to mumble. The Lord's my shepherd. I said, no, I won't make me lie down to you. Lord, bless this food. I'm about to see you. I'm about to see you. I heard the devil out again. <laughs> Come on, we're ready. Let's do it. Ready. I, Father, I believe and declare, Father, believe and declare that your holy angels, your holy angels make, my straight, make my way straight, that you guard and protect me guard from, harm and from harm and danger. I ask and declare, ask and declare that the blood of Jesus blood covers my cars, covers my, cars my, property, my property, my life, my life the lives of my children. My family and my loved ones, I believe and declare that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I continue to live my life free, free from the power of sin, sickness, disease, and illness. I love the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my muchness. This is the purpose you have given my life. And this is who I am in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. That's not hype. Oh, no, that's, that's how we stand. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but this is how I fight my battles. I start in the morning because he may want to get an early start. I got to start one step before him. Before he wants to act up, I want to let him know I'm ready. I'm ready. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. That ain't good t-shirt material. That's how I live my life. And I pray that over you as well as our church. No weapon formed against you. It's going to form, but it's not going to prosper. It's going to, it's going to, they're going to act up, but it's not going to get you stirred up. They're going to try and come after you, but they're not going to win. They're going to they gonna, they gonna strike, but they're not going to injure you. Can you hear me yet? This is the prayer over you, that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And that you would again begin to pray that over your family, your loved ones, that you would have a confession, a regiment of faith. Because we have God-given authority. Somebody hearing me yet? And so what then, Pastor Jesus, as you're looking at this, Paul gave Three major themes of spiritual warfare. They're found in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. This charge, Paul speaking to Timothy, this charge, I, I entrust to you, Timothy, my child. He, he saw Timothy as a son in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that you may wage the good warfare. 
holding faith and a good conscience. It's three things, prophecies, a good warfare, and a good conscience. And when we break those down, and this is where we're going to go week by week today. I'll take this first one. But this first one, then prophecies, then, you know, prophecies are our weapons. They are the powerful gifts of the Spirit. Weapons, he means our weapons. They are powerful gifts of the Spirit. Stay with me, I'm gonna go keep going. Here's the second one then. He says, wage good warfare. These are strategies, the long-term strategic campaign against the forces of darkness. One of those very practical ones where you wanna get all mystic is just prayer. Prayer is a long-range strategic campaign against the forces of darkness. Why? Well, my children aren't married yet, but do I pray for their spouses? Oh yeah, long-term strategic plan because I don't want them to mess around and get involved with the wrong one. So Father, I thank you for spouses for all my children. That Lord, they love the Lord, they love my children, and they love me and their mother. They like being around us. They're not drama, they are not strife. They're strong in the Lord and that them and my children are better together than apart. Good warfare. Because either you're gonna wage it on the front end or you're gonna definitely wage it on the back end. Oh, that got too real. Okay, let me move on. on, Because got the list, I'm gonna leave. Third one then is where Paul talks about holding faith and good conscience. This is the armor of God, specifically is out our protection. It's three things that we're going to talk about in spiritual warfare, weapons, strategies, and then protection. Today, then, I want to talk about weapons, and those weapons are our spiritual gifts. Weapons, our spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians in chapter 12, it's where we're starting and talking about spiritual gifts. I chose the New King James. I like that a little better, not because it's named after me, but because it's there. And so it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, this is Paul again talking to the church in Corinth. I do not want you to be ignorant. Here's where he's talking about a lack of knowledge. He's starting to talk about spiritual gifts, and the number one thing he starts with is, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to not have knowledge. It's a devastating thing when a believer doesn't know what they believe in. And you definitely don't know all that God is, has. So it's why we endeavor to continue to go deeper in the Lord, not to gain knowledge so we're confident in knowledge, but to know him. Paul says to this church, I do not want you to be ignorant. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. That's a capital S. That means the Holy Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works in all in all. But the manifestation of, again, this capitalist, the Holy Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So it's not given to you to profit you, it's given to you to profit the body as a whole. For to one is given, here are the gifts now, the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a word of knowledge through the same Spirit to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same capital S spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he, capital H, Holy Spirit, wills. It's by his plan, his desire. He distributes gifts. He distributes these spiritual gifts. Well, Pastor James, I'd like you to go in depth on each one. I would too, but I don't have the time. Well, Pastor James, how am I supposed to know more? I'm glad you asked. Discover Agape is on December the 12th. We go into spiritual gifts and actually in the Discover book, we actually go through each one of these gifts and give you scriptural reference and explain what each one is so that you know that when you see and you find your spiritual gift, you have spiritual backing and you see it working in your life. You've already been working in it. You just don't even know it. You didn't have a name for it. 
but the Lord is working. Here's the thing, even if you don't like God and even if you don't believe in God, it's okay. He believes in you and you're still operating these gifts. It's just the enemy's just twisted it in your life. So when you say like, man, I can just seem to catch people's motives. That's just a, like, I, I, got, I have an intuition. No, you don't. It's a spiritual gift that's not surrendered to the Lord yet. And until you find him, you have an enemy that's going to keep whispering. And, they, and how you know it's the enemy? Because he keeps telling you that is you. But let me tell you this. Let me warn you, whoever you are, whatever you give the power to make you will also have the power to break you. And why you trust God is he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And until that voice that you're speaking to you, telling you you're all that has died for you, I encourage you, don't serve that voice. Find, find one, a voice that leads a trail to love like you have never known in your life. That will set you free. That's not seeking to bind you and make you dependent on it to enslave you but to say, you can cast your cares upon me because I care for you. This, this is a thing. This is where these spiritual gifts are real. So Pastor James, define it. Then a spiritual gift then is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in this world. Once again, a supernatural ability that God gives. It's by the power of his spirit to his children so that together, somebody say together. Yeah. Together, yeah. That's why you have people that then are Christians that are operating gifts, but they're not linked to anybody. They're not linked to a church family. They aren't linked to any faith community. So they're just out there roguing it. And they're just as out of order as anybody else. Because there has to be a togetherness. It creates accountability so that we all don't get off in our minds. Like, he, like the people that we know around here that be like, you know, like, I heard, you know what I heard? They ain't talked to nobody. You know where they heard it? Sitting at the house, waiting, pondering. Oh, it's not real? I'm going to tell you how real it is. Here at Laurel, we got this place. It's, I think it's, like, it's China Buffet. Anybody know where China Buffet is? On 16th Avenue? I'm not asking if you ate there. I'm just saying, do you know where it is? <laughs> Right next to Burger the King. Okay, right there. So I remember somebody walked up and they, they walked. I remember they came up. Uh, Pastor James, you know what? Uh, you heard Golden Crowds going in over it. Over it. That used to be Ryan's. Anybody remember that was Ryan's? Yeah, yeah I never did. But anyway, so Ryan. Uh, Golden Crowds going in. I said, well, what made you think that? And they looked at us all. This is what they said. I heard. So I said, well, what, what made you think that? Well, they were over there like uh, cutting down all the weeds and stuff in the, in the parking lot. Did I miss something? The spirit of weeds, like all of a sudden means golden crowd. Like, like, so I said, I, I said, and? Well, I mean, why would they be doing that if they weren't going in there? Well, what if it's another restaurant that's going in there? And then they look back at me like I was crazy. So of course I start thinking, maybe I am. I don't know. I thought, maybe. I said, well, so I asked this really dumb question. I said, well, you know, when people apply for permits, businesses, they have to go to the to city and apply at the permit. Did you go see there who it is? I got another crazy look like. I said, so wait, you came up with this and they hadn't even, you haven't gone to check to see who pulled the permit? But they heard. Where did they hear it? Right here. Listen, there are things I hear in my own life right here. I can misinterpret something my wife does and be like, you know what? She's thinking like, you know, why'd she do that? She just did that to irritate me. She's just, I'm sick of this. And you don't even know. And now all of a sudden, I heard. Heard you don't respect me as the head of this house. Heard, you know, all this kind of madness. And she's letting you know, oh no, I just dropped it down there. I wasn't feeling good. I thought it was gonna throw up, so I just had to drop it right there before I went and made a mess on the carpet. I was gonna pick it up as soon as I came back, but I fell asleep because I took some medicine and I get a chance. Oh, so she wasn't just being disrespectful and dropped your laundry on the floor. She was ill. But I heard that she's 
not respecting me. Like she's like, pick it up yourself, put it away yourself. I'm sick and tired. You see how the enemy can work? You got to watch these kinds of things. It's a supernatural ability. God uses spiritual gifts as divine weapons to overcome the devil and the evil in this world. When Jesus was doing miracles, you know, they even said, well, he's doing miracles by the power of Satan. Here's his response in Matthew chapter 12. You read the whole chapter and count the whole account, but here's how he responds. He says, that, but if, if I'm casting out uh, uh, demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of heaven of God has arrived to you. Anyone who, is, who is with, isn't with me opposes me. Anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. This is why you have to be really careful about watching when people are, are out there de de or, sorry, sorry, divulging or dabbling in the supernatural. It is real. They do hear. Uh, it may be accurate to an extent. But what's on the hook? Does it lead you closer to the Lord and freedom or does it make you more dependent upon that person to hear something that God intends for you to hear for yourself? Be careful. It's a good looking state, but it's got a hook in it. God will give it to you and he ain't got a hook in it for you. His freedom, he'll set you free. He'll break every chain. He'll heal you where you hurt the most. To the one that's in here that has felt powerless, and so you have, you've gotten into strange fire, weird darkness, because you have been powerless your whole life, and finally you have been infused with some authority and power, I warn you, I warn you, I warn you that that power has an end to it that is absolute destruction for you. And that the first place, and here's some, here's, here's, hear me, hear me, whoever this would be, it's a dangerous thing to be empowered when you haven't been healed first. Because ultimately, that wound will demand a response. And when that wound is anger or hostility or hatred, you will turn that authority or power that you've been given toward the object of that hostility, hatred, fury. But when the Lord comes in, he heals you in that very painful place, then you're able to then administer the full authority that you're given in a righteous way so that you're not on some kind of quiet revenge tour, but you can step back from the pain and you can say, Lord, what's good? And you become a conduit of blessing instead of an agent of a curse. It's the healing process. And some of us, we want to stay wounded because we like the feeling finally of being in power. But in Jesus' name, I'm encouraging you. Would you lay down that very, very, very faulty weapon and first let the Lord heal you. And then he'll put something, a weapon in your hand, the sword of the spirit, that will serve every purpose that you really have in your life. I'm telling you the weapon that you're fooling with now and the level of pain that you are in is playing roulette with a gun that in every chamber's loaded. And you think the enemy is just spinning and you think that you got a chance at living. You have no chance at living through this if you don't surrender your life and let the Lord heal you. And so when we start looking at Jesus saying, hey, this is how he, he overcame, this is what they said, if, it's not, if it opposes me, they are working against me. The Holy Spirit then is the primary weapon against the enemy. You have to interact and connect with the Holy Spirit in order to overcome spiritual darkness. And how do you know that it's such a big thing? Because church people don't fight over anything more than they fight about that very thing. I don't believe in all that Holy Spirit stuff. 
Cool, no problem. You don't have to believe in it, but just, just tell me this. Let me look at the fruit of your life. Are you bearing fruit? Because this is how we all bear fruit. You have a relationship. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. You may not like the expressions of it, and we may disagree on how it is. No problem. I don't want to fight over. We're not going to fight over simple stuff. We don't fight over clothes or carpet. We're not going to fight over the expression of God's spirit. But we are going to be in contend. Here's what I want to say is that when you have a disagreement, gone are the days where you just get to disagree from a place of no knowledge. Show me. Show me in the word where you're standing on that. That's all I'm asking. We're not trying to debate, and I don't want to win. I want the Lord to win in both of our lives. I don't care. I'm not a theologian. I'm, there's, there's nothing famous about me. I don't give care. I want you to win. I want to win. And I can't stand seeing when the enemy beats up on believers mercilessly. And they say, I don't believe it's really him. No, you don't. Well, then who is it? God who gave his son for you just absolutely is bored? So he's got to sit there and beat up on you? There, take that. Let me hurt your child. Let me wreck your car. Let me beat up on your self-esteem. Let me tell you you're ugly, even though the word says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. But no, 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 he's got to he's wail on you. Like the ex-boyfriend or girlfriend you got rid of. You had enough sense to know that they weren't good for you, yet we want to hold hands with Satan. He came back again. Come on, you might hear me yet. You might hear This is wherever. So, spiritual gifts, then, where's why I end today? God's arsenal of warfare. So I'm in this first part about weapons. The word of wisdom, then, here's spiritual gifts. The word of wisdom through the spirit. The word of knowledge through the spirit. Discerning of spirits exposes the strategies of the enemy. So that's the purpose of that one. It exposes the strategies of the enemy. Those gifts expose a strategy. So a word of knowledge that'll come. It'll be something like, hey, you know, like you're praying for somebody. I've, I've at different times been praying over someone else. So you know, what? it seems like you just have an issue with like, like submitting. Does somebody like in authority not treat you well? Well, I had a teacher. And all of a sudden, it'll, just, it'll, it'll go to a thing there where it's a wound that they had as a child that they have carried their whole life. So they don't trust people in authority. I've prayed over people in the marriages that it seemed like they can't seem to get oh, and you kind of get to it and you kind of hear and man, I would love to tell you like it's just and sometimes like you get a word of knowledge in prayer like I can't always hear and I was like I keep feeling like something happened. How's your relationship with your dad? Oh, have mercy! All of a sudden, it'll open up. And they never saw that that's a root or something that's there. In my own life, I remember I had an encounter with the teacher and I heard her say, I hope you feel as stupid as you look. I remember her saying that to me. And I remember like I had a thing and, and I'm not even sure now if she really even said that, but that's what I heard. She may have said as foolish as you, but whatever, I just, I heard stupid. And, and I'll tell you, that has been a rage place for me in my life where I've had to really battle it because if I feel like someone calls me stupid, like, I have to be really careful. It'll light me up. There's a surrendering place where I'm like, Lord, what is that about? Well, I've had to surrender that. Father, heal that wound in me. Because you know what it is? Like, it looks like it's something really small like stupid, but you know what it really is? It's about a thing that if you keep striving for that, You'll get degrees and go in debt over getting more and more quote unquote knowledge for who? To impress people. And yet the Lord gave me this mind first to serve him. So I gotta surrender that and allow him to heal that wound so that I can hear where someone may be saying something to me and, and they're not implying anything, but if you got the wrong filter, you hear, oh, you think I'm stupid too? They never even said that. And then that trickles into relationships because you never got healing back here. You are functionally lame in every relationship you're in. 
because we didn't get whole back here. Just because you put a ring on it doesn't mean you were healed on it. So you got to get healed. You got to let the Lord work. Now, someone actually may call me stupid. You know what? It's not going to invoke a violent reaction or violent, because my confidence is not in what you think. I've got a Lord, I've got a Savior that told me I'm not. He doesn't think I'm stupid at all. I'm good with that. You never died for me, so I don't really care what you think. I'm going to keep moving, because you ain't going to please everybody. You're not going to make everybody happy. All right, come on, let me finish up. Here's the second one then. Then we talk about then faith, gifts of healings, the working of miracles, defeat the plan of the enemy. So the enemy works something, establishes something in our lives. So here's that, 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 that issue, that, 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 that gnawing. I've been called stupid. Well, my pastor prays for me. Lord, I just pray that for every wound that James would have. Lord, you heal that. I pray that he find his identity in you. Now, now the Lord moves in my life and I've, I've received a healing in that area and has now defeated that plan that the enemy had to keep that infection in my life, my whole life. There are times where the enemy has affected people with illness. We pray and we believe, robbing them of their mobility or an opportunity. And so when faith, gifts of faith, healing, working of miracles, when that happens, it defeats the plan of the enemy. It disrupts what he intended to be for evil. It disrupts it. It ends it. It defeats his plan. Here's his third one then. Then there's the gifts of prophecy, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. They strengthen the hands of the warriors engaged in the fight. And so you get a word, encouragement. There are times where Becky Hooper will come up and uh, she'll, she'll say, I'm just sensing this. And it's a word of encouragement. It's exhortation. That is that gift uh, of exhortation, prophecy, where she gives a word and all of a sudden it strengthens someone. Like all, now, all of a sudden, it is now strengthened. They're in battle. They're fighting for their identity. They're standing with something on their job. They're, they're working, with, like they're, they're fighting. And they get that word of encouragement. It is strengthening their arms. Like all of a sudden, that word, can, anybody catching this yet? This making sense at all. Okay, this is how these things work. Here's where we're in, in right here. Pastor James, why does the battle even matter? And why does spiritual warfare even matter? We find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Our light and momentary troubles are achieving an eternal glory that outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. He tells us, fix your eyes not on what you can see, but on what's, what you cannot see. And look what scripture goes on to say. I didn't write this. It's like... This is like the real version. He says, since what is seen is, it's there in the word. But what is unseen is, say la. That means think about it. It ain't false, it's very real. It's very real. I've never seen the wind, but I've seen its effects. I've never seen the wind, but I'll tell you this, I've been on an airplane, I know, I know, it's, it's got effects. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You don't have to be on an airplane really to see the wind. You go down 59 on the right day and it'll push your car. Anybody hearing me yet? Yeah, we've seen it, we've seen it. Oh yeah, we see the wind. Windmills. I've never seen gravity but I bet you I govern my life according to it. Well, I've never seen, I've never seen. It's okay, but you've seen its effects. You've seen when it attacks your life, attacks your business, goes after your heart, messes with your mind. You've seen its effects. He says, don't, those things are temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Stand and fight. I'm hoping you got something out of this today. Right where you are, we're going to end where we started. That's that same confession. Dave, can you put that confession up there for me again? And this is where I want to end today. And this time I don't want you to stand. 
want you to stand on the inside. I want you to stand on the inside. And if you absolutely need to stand on the outside, go ahead and do that. You got the free, this is a free country. I told you that from the beginning. So if you want to stand right now, you can. That's up to you. Whatever response you need to make, I'm encouraging you to make it right now. But I at least want you standing on the inside. All right, now with confidence, we're going to say it again. And now this is your prayer over your own life. You change this. This is, you know, this isn't in scripture, so I can't like go like the scriptures in it. But it's not like in the like you know in the Bible. This book of Second James, though, chapter two, which isn't scripture. It's just my own book. You know, I encourage you. All right, we're ready. Let's say it together. Let's ready. Let's read it together. Let's go, Father. I believe and declare that your holy angels make my way straight, that you guard and protect me from harm and danger. I ask and declare that the blood of Jesus covers my cars, my property, my life, and the lives of my children, my family, and loved ones. And I believe and declare that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I continue to live my life free from the power of sin, sickness, disease, and illness. I love the Lord with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my muchness. This is the divine purpose you have given my life, and this is who I am in you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, wait right, right there. Just let the Lord wash you in that. Father's pastor then I ask you to break every chain in Jesus name every place that the enemy has tried to keep a stronghold Father I thank you in the name of Jesus that you break every chain every false thought that you bring it into captivity against the plan of God that Father that you shatter those false mirrors that have been placed on the lives of your people mirrors that told them you're not enough of this or you're too much of that mirrors that have said that you can't do and what you can do mirrors that said that generationally you've never accomplished and you never will mirrors that said you're never gonna have it and you never will mirrors that said that you are gonna have to that that things for you are never gonna break other people get breaks it's because of who they are what they look like or the color of their skin or the color of yours in Jesus name as God is for you who can be against you that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper means even history cannot prevail against you. It's going to be his story, though, that makes all the difference in the world. I bless you with new vision. I bless you with the heart of God. I bless you that you'd be healed on the inside. I bless you that he give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I bless you that you see yourself in a new light as a new creation in Christ. That all things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new in your life, in my life. That you would be bold in the Lord and the power of his might. You'd be filled with faith, hope, and love. And that you'd be in right standing with the Lord Jesus. That you'd feel his love like never before. That he would feel you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. That it not be emotion, it would be a change. Not just an encounter, but change, Jesus. Wreck us all from the inside out and then make me over again. That you'd be clay on the potter's wheel fresh again. And that everything that has been done against you that has caused a gouge or a wound, that you'd be made over again. That you be a broken vessel of honor. That's the picture I'm getting. I heard him. I want to make sure I say it right. Is it Kisuji? Is that right? Did I say that right? Who knows what I'm talking about there? Say it with me. Who said that? Say Dell. Kisuji. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And it's where they take broken vessels put them back together, but instead of using glue, they use absolute pure gold. And the broken vessel is more valuable than when it was whole. So all its cracks 
are filled with something really valuable. Someone in this room, the Lord is filling up your broken places and you're more valuable. You're not broken anymore, you're healed. But you're looking and saying, I still see cracks. I said, it's okay, he's taking care of the cracks. You're whole. And he's filled you with something more valuable than glue. He filled you with him. Every place where you're broken, he's filled. It doesn't matter what you look like. All of a sudden, what's been your wounds are now your beauty marks. And you're going to stop seeing your scars in your life as evidence that you are wounded. You're going to start seeing the scars in your life as evidence that you're healed. Father, do it in Jesus' name. Do it in Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every head closed in, right where you are, if you've not made a decision to surrender your life to Jesus, we'd love the opportunity to give you to do that today. It's a choice. It's a choice. And did the Lord go through all this today just for you? Yeah, he did. But Pastor James, like, I don't think I know everything. I think that's wise. I think you're right. I think you, you should get to know them. But do you feel the love of God today to a place where you are willing to say, Lord, I want to start this journey. I want to choose you. I sense your love. I'm not afraid. I feel the love of God. And that's enough. Come on in right where you are. If that's you today, right where you are, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you forward. I am going to ask you to make a commitment right where you are today. I simply raise your hand. We're going to pray with you. Again, I'm not going to embarrass you. But you do have to make a decision. And be honest, because tomorrow is not promised. So right where you are, if you need to surrender your life to Jesus, don't be afraid. Don't take one more second. Would you lift your hands and say, Pastor James, it's me. Oh, my goodness. One, I see you. Anybody else? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Come on. Anybody else there? Thank you, Lord. Check in the balcony. I'm trusting that we're all, oh my goodness, yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh my goodness, we've had responses today. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Right where you are, if you raise your hand, I need you to repeat after me. You're going to pray with me. Okay, now what you're going to hear is everybody else is going to pray together. We want to do that because we want you to hear that you're part of a family. And so you're making an individual decision, but you, it is a community benefit. Because you being who you are, everything in Christ is, 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 is helpful to the whole kingdom. And so we want to pray with you. Church family, y'all ready to show your support for those that have made a decision? All right, lift your hand right where you are. If you would, with me, pray with me. Father God, I have sinned. I've made mistakes. I'm asking for your forgiveness. You said in your word, if I surrender my life to Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. Jesus. I surrender my life to you. Father God, I choose to believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And right now, according to your word, I am saved. I'm your child and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Will somebody give God thanks for that today? We made that decision today. Would you just help us? The Lord tells us, he didn't tell us to make Christians. He said to make disciples and we want to help you in taking your next steps. That does not mean we're going to talk to you necessarily about membership here at Agape. We will. We want you to know you're welcome here. But our goal is to help you get on a journey of discipleship. And so we only know how to do that if you communicate with us. If you made that decision, there's a card in the seat in front of you. Would you indicate that? Just say, I made a decision for Christ and we will be in contact with you to do nothing else but help you start a discipleship journey. If you just turn in a connection point, we promise we want to be good stewards over those that the Lord sends in our direction for whatever season it would be. If it's just for this Sunday or if it's a continuing season with us, we want to be good stewards of whoever the Lord brings in this house because it's a precious thing when you make a decision for Jesus. We want to honor him and honor you in that way. Thank you, God.